Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about an exciting topic, which is how to read and write Excel files with Python. Before I jump in, I'd like to ask you to consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get ad-free videos and direct access to me among the benefits. As usual, disclaimer, do not use any code that's given to you without thoroughly vetting it, making sure it fits your needs and it is secure. This is just meant for demonstration purposes. You can get this stupid in notebook by following the link in the description. You'll also get any data files I'm using. As usual, um, in my notebooks, I put links to other documentation so you can do further research if you'd like. I'm gonna start with the simplest use case possible. I just wanna read an Excel file. That's it, nothing fancy. Well, I can do that with pandas very easily. So I start by importing pandas as PD, and then I just have to say PD read Excel demgeography.xlsx. And when I do that, it gives me a nice little display suitable for framing here of my file. Now you will notice it has this extra little column, which if you've used data frames, you know that's the data frame index. You may not want that, and there's ways we can tailor how that works, but by default, it just adds this sequence number to our data frame. Okay, that's great, but maybe we'd rather save this file to a data frame. So let's try that. To do that, all we have to do is same as before, but we're going to assign the results to our data frame, df underscore geo. And I wanna try something a little different here. I'm going to say index underscore col is equal to zero. Let's see what that does, because what I'll do here is display two of the rows so we can see how that looks. And you see it worked. And now we don't have that extra index column. We just took the geography column and that is our key now, it's our index. Now we've saved this as a data frame so we can do things like save this data frame and query and slice and dice and all that good stuff. Let's try a little variation on this. Sometimes you have multiple worksheets within a single Excel spreadsheet and we can read in a specific worksheet by adding the parameter sheet name equal and then just give it the name of the sheet you wanna read in. I'm doing a little variance here too. And this time I'm gonna say the index column is column one. And then I'll display the data frame as DF sales. So this is a different worksheet within the same file. And you notice that store ID actually had been column zero, but when I assigned the second column city as the data frame index, it moved that into the left and displays it. So that's now our index. Okay, let's try one slight variation on this. We're gonna create a new data frame, df underscore sales two. And this is pretty much what we just did before. We're gonna be bringing in the sales sheet, et cetera, same file. I'm gonna say index col equal none, so we're not asking it to assign an index column. But the big difference I want you to notice is that we are assigning column names. We're gonna give it our own column names and override the ones in the file. We do that by just saying names equal and then give it a list of column names we want. So it's a list and each column name is in quotes, as you can see here. And then we'll display the data frame just to see how that looks. And just as we expected, you can see that now we have our own column headings and we have an index back because we said index col equal none. It didn't make any of the columns an index. So it added a new one. So now you know how to read Excel files. You even know how to read them into a data frame. But what if you want to save them to a file, especially an Excel file? Which is pretty likely, right? Well, fortunately, all we have to do is use a method which hangs off of the data frame. So we can say, for instance, DF sales, the data frame we created earlier, to Excel, that's the method, and then just pass in the file name we wanna save it to. And if we take a look, we can see that it actually saved a file. However, you may decide you wanna write it to a specific sheet within a file. You can do that by including the sheet name parameter, as you see here, and you just give it the name of the worksheet you wanna save it as. And of course, you already have the file, but there it is again. Now, I do need to give you a warning. You might think, gee, I just did this. It's either going to do one of two things. It's either going to give me an error because the file already exists, or it's going to just simply add this worksheet as a sheet within the file. It don't, don't need that. It actually deletes your file. It overwrites what's there. So just be a little careful here because if you think you're, creating a sheet within an existing file. That's not how it works. It's actually replacing your file. You know, I've been doing this for years and as a data engineer, I hate working with Excel files. There's all kinds of bizarre stuff you can get in them. They can have formulas, they can have weird characters, they can shift around, and then you have to deal with all these different potential sheets within a file. 
it's actually a lot easier if you can take your Excel files and convert them into CSV files. Very easy to do in this case, because we can just say data frame to CSV and then give it the name of our CSV file. And I'm telling it here, I don't want to have an index. So I do that and lo and behold, it saves my file to CSV. So wrapping up, we saw a few things here. It's a quick video. I wanted to really just get the basics out to you. But as you've seen, by using pandas, we can easily read and write Excel files. In fact, we can even take an Excel file and write it to a CSV. And I showed you some parameters where you can specify a worksheet specifically within the file. But again, be careful because when you save to an Excel file, it just replaces it. That's all for this time. So please like, share, subscribe, and let people know about my channel. Please put comments in. I read the comments. I respond to the comments, etc. I like to get your feedback. I hope this is helpful. Until next time. I'm Paul Employer. We're all in this together. Thank you.